The aesthetics of cycling products are a consideration for the designers and manufacturers of bikes, clothing and accessories used in the sport. Aesthetics not only influence, but are influenced by both the consumer and the professional rider. As the sport develops, the importance of aesthetics is not underestimated by industry leaders. Cycling is kind of one of those aspirational activities that, uh, that a lot of people want to identify with. And once you get to that stage, then so the aesthetics of cycling and the way that the sport itself looks is then a transferable, marketable thing. Aesthetics is so important to get right. A younger customer will maybe want bright colours, whereas an older customer will want maybe a little bit more understated. So it's a... Uh, it's a fine art trying to get the colours right. I think the sense of uniform is very strong to, to cyclists. People are really particular about the length of socks they wear, you know, the colour of the shoes they've got on, if they wear shoe covers or not, the way their sunglasses are worn. It's kind of quite it's partially rule driven and it's partially like putting on a suit of armour. Branding has a huge impact with the consumers. I mean, it, it, it does come down to that. I mean, if you're going to spend an awful lot of money on a bike, you want it to look good. Um, and there, are, there have been brands in the past that have concentrated purely on the, the mechanics and the engineering of the bike, and then totally overlooked the branding and the, the finish of the product. We can design the best bike in the world, but if it doesn't look good, it's not going to sell. As the image of the sport of cycling grows in the public eye, the processes of designing the aesthetics of bikes, clothing and accessories is increasingly influenced by trends, high fashion and other industries. We always start by asking ourselves who the person is who is going to end up buying this bike. What kind of other bikes are out there on the market that they will be influenced by? What are we trying to sort of coax them away from? in order to buy our product. We try to look to wider culture to provide cues of where we should be going. So as opposed to being um, driven by potential future trends in cycling, we'd either look back to the history of cycling and, and try to bring things that we like there, elements of that out, or alternatively look to kind of men's wear fashions or women's wear fashions and try and bring in elements of those and try and kind of combine the two. We'll have a, a, a graphic designer. He spends probably two, three months at least, sort of doing a brief of the graphics. And then once we've got all that together, we'll sit together as a team and then decide which graphics we like, what suit for what model, what colours are on trend. You know, that's a massive thing as well in such a, that one year we'll have fluoro colours that are massively, you know, quite in at the moment. Um, and then, it, you know, then it'll be go back to darks or then we also start whether we want full-on colour frames or whether you want colour hits, small detailing. It's quite a, it's, it's a, a, the game is always changing every year. It is important that we at Condor are always aware of any trends and fashions, be it in um, other industries or within the bicycle industry itself. The way in which we go about deciding on those colours and um, the nature of the graphics will involve a lot of research mainly. Um, we look at the other products that are in those particular sectors of the market. So be it racing cars, be it um, the graphic elements that you get on other modes of transport, planes, motorbikes, um, the snow sports industry, you name it, we're looking at it all the time. All designs start with pencil and paper. We will pull bits of colour out of magazines, out of papers, out of whatever, to, to mock up ideas and, and put ideas down on, on paper so that we can um, communicate to each other exactly what we're all thinking. It's easier to communicate those ideas with a sketch than it is on screen. With design in general, you just don't really notice good design and that definitely extends into cycling clothing as well. Um, you just make the product that allows you to focus on, on riding the bike and whether you're kind of a member of Team Sky um, or whether you're someone who uses cycling as an escape from kind of your daily existence, it's the same reasons, you know, we're designing for, to try and solve the same problems, you know, we don't want to get in the way of people riding, it's just to allow them to, to enjoy it as much as possible. The aesthetics of the kit has become an essential factor when aiming to satisfy both the professional and the amateur cyclist. Professional teams in events such as the Tour de France are now dictating the designs
the kit that the pro riders use has a massive effect in that it 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 is portrayed as the best, the lightest, um, the the most optimized. So it's sort of only natural that the consumers um, consumers want to uh, aspire to own own the same kit. We have a sample room in house um, that when we identify an interesting fabric, um, we can make it into a garment very quickly. So we have existing patterns that will then come down and cut the. Uh, garment to suit and then we can put it on people's backs to test. Probably the best example of that recently is a series of mesh jerseys we used with Team Sky at this year's tour. Um, those went from um, design to realisation in eight days and then they were being worn at the tour because the demand suddenly came from the team that they wanted a jersey which was completely mesh. In terms of aesthetics, it's such an aspirational thing, the Tour de France you know, now the whole nation is getting swept away with the success of Chris Froome, Bradley Wiggins, that the eyes of everybody, of the eyes of all our consumers are suddenly on these guys. Every day those guys have to put those clothes on and ride around in the general public. People are looking at them every day, so we want them to look good because, you know, we're showcasing our brands and, and the bikes that we're using. But also, you know, they, they have to feel good about what they're doing. The psychological aspect of getting dressed to ride can't be underestimated because, you know, when you pull sunglasses on, suddenly kind of the, the colour of the world changes and uh, and it's like the final act in, kind of in getting dressed before you go out to race. So one of the things we've learned through working with Sky is that the psychological side of things just cannot be underestimated. <laughs>